Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we are going to go over conditional statements or flow statements. Before, we were learning variables, lists, maps, um, iterables. And basically, that tells us the vocabulary and the um, uh, alphabet of a language itself. Now we have to start putting it together. And this is where the logic and this is where the fun part starts beginning. But unfortunately, like all languages, once you learn the basics, it becomes harder, right? Because you can ha say dog is brown, but then you get more advanced sentences and it becomes a little bit harder to keep track of. So unfortunately, it gets worse before it gets better, okay? And only once you've mastered it over years does it start to become second nature, which I am certainly not there. I really hope you'll be there in the future. So we've already learned one type of flow statement. It was the assert, remember? So asserts, let's say, for example, integer age equals 35. Assert age equals 35. I'm jumping ahead. Let me back up here a little bit. What a conditional statement of if, else, if, and else is, it, what it says is, if a particular condition occurs, so if a condition occurs, then do something. And this is the syntax. So if this happens, and this is true, so this is a bool between um, open and close parentheses. If true, do this. If false, do not do this. Then we go to else. If this condition is true something else it's not or else okay so you're not in trouble here so else do something else this is how it looks um, without it being commented out of course if this condition is true then do this if not is this true? If this condition is true, then do this. If not, automatically jump to this. So if you look at that, everything here is mutually exclusive. So you should do either this or this or this. If one thing becomes true, you execute what's in the curly brackets and you're done. You're done with this group, group of itself. So that's what is a characteristic of the if, if, el, em, else, if. When we look at assert, isn't that the same thing? So Assert age equals 35. Okay, now let's go through what is the double equal sign itself. Well, the single equal sign is an assignment operator. I think we went over that in the past. It's an equal sign. It basically, it says age has the value, it's, or it's an identifier, a value of 35, right? So it doesn't, it's not like 1 plus 1 equals 2. It, it, it's it's basically not um it, it's giving the variable of age the identity or the value itself what the double equal sign it is basically called a equality or relational operator and um those come in the form of equal. So basically what this does is it compares this value to this value. And and that's what it was doing, or, or rather this value to this value. Um, it, it compares the two. So double equals is compare the two. This one is give it that value. So equal to, so what other relational operators are there? Less than, greater, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or just outright not equal to, okay? Exclamation point, equal sign. So if age equals 35, so if age has the value of 35, keep moving on. But what assert also does is if this is not true, if this is false, stop right there, okay? So if we run this program, everything goes as fine, right? Because this is true. What if you said age is not equal to 35, 
that's false. It's going to give you an assertion error, right? Assertion error right there. So, so that was originally, already we, we know of a certain type of flow statement or conditional statement. But but let's create our own now, okay? If, remember, let's look, do the condition. If age is, let's just say, less than 35, print you are young, okay? So that's the syntax. Open bracket, new line, print, and you can print multiple things. Okay, because we have a semicolon there, so we can do a new line followed by a semicolon. Remember, this is called string interpolation. So instead of, after the dollar sign, instead of writing the word age, it will substitute the value of age. Let's see what happens. Nothing. Because that condition is false, it kept going. So what if we said is equal? Then it would actually print, right? Because this value is now true. But let's not do that. And let's just say instead, so it will we'll keep going on. Else if age is equal to 35, print you are at a good age. Okay? What's it going to print? Excellent. Um, what about everything else? So else so if you're younger than 35 or equal to 35 what other option is there older than 35 right there's nothing really in between that's the only option so um else remember there's no condition after the else so that should be curly bracket because there is everything else gets dumped into that category so there is no other condition so else just jump to the what are you going to do print you are old so age, let's just say, is 43. You are old. If it's 35, you're at a good age. What if you're a one-year-old? You're young. You're one year old. Um, what if you two negative 33? Eh, you're still kind of young, right, I guess? Eh, probably not born yet, but at least you're still young. So that's what you can do. And these, remember, are mutually exclusive. So let's just say else if age is less than 40, OK? So you can be both true age is less than 35. Age is less, that's true. You can also be age is less than 40. Those are both true, right? Well, let's see what happens. Um, Uh-oh, it doesn't say you're at a good age. Why? Remember, they're mutually exclusive. Once this was true, everything else just gets ignored in this group. What if you want to be able to write more than that? For example, um, if you wanted to say, uh, you're young, let, let's remove that part. Um, you're 35 years old. What if you wanted to say, if age is less than 99? Then conditional print at least you are alive. Okay, so less than 35, you're, it's going to print your age, at least you are alive. It's age 30, so it should both of the, do, do both of those, right? Because these are mutually exclusive, this is not. If you create a new if, you can simultaneously at the same time do all of do, do both of these commands or list as many ifs as you want to. So what if your age 50 or 60, okay? Not true, not true. That is true and that is true. So you are old from up here else and at least you're still alive, right? So that's the best thing that we can do. Couple of things that you got to be careful about. Sometimes it the if if you have multiple possibilities, say for example, um, if uh, age is, you want to say if the age is a negative number, um, 
maybe you want to put something else inside here. So else else if age is less than or equal to zero. Okay, so if somebody, some wise guy put in some value inside there, print that does not really work. Let's format this back up again so it looks nice and pretty. Let's print this and let's say this is negative three. Um, you are negative three years old, at least you're alive. What's going on here? Well, age is 35. So what you would probably have to do is remove this. And what do we do? We'd have to put it above, right? Because it's going to hit that one first. It's going to hit that one and then everything else afterwards gets knocked off if this one becomes true. Pretty it up again. Okay. Print. That does not really work. At least you're still alive. This one again, not mutually exclusive, so it still applies. This one gets knocked out because less than 35, right? Um, it's mutually exclusive. This already got activated. This one does not. So I hope that's actually clear. You can use it in conjunction. You can simultaneously use the, the, the ifs, but as soon as you use an else if or an else, mutually exclusive. All right, so that's pretty much it for the conditional statements themselves. I hope it was helpful. Right now we went only over the integers and the numbers themselves. We'll go over more the strings and bools and everything else in the future. Um, remember, the relational operators and the assignment operators, those are different and keep that in mind because that sometimes fools me because I accidentally type a single equal sign rather than a double equal sign um, when I actually need to. All right. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much.